El Salvador framework uses JavaScript for code running in the browser, but the equally or even more important data loaders can use any language. Don't believe me? Well, in this video, I'll briefly show you examples using Python, R, shell scripts, and Julia. With data loaders, you can use your skills in other languages to do all of your data wrangling and analysis, and then make interactive graphics in JavaScript that natively run in the browser. All of the code I'm showing you here is linked from the video notes below. When you build a framework project, data loaders are run to fetch data from sources like databases and APIs, or even to run models. The output goes into data files that are usually in formats like CSV, Parquet, and so on, but can be anything, like even images. We have a few videos and blog posts that go into more detail on data loaders, which I'll also link to below. But in short, the reason this is a good idea is because it moves time-consuming processes to build time, making for much snappier dashboards for your users. First, let's try a simple logistic regression on a data set with this data loader written in Python. It reads in the Palma Penguins dataset using pandas, and then computes the logistic regression between the penguins' body measurements and their species. It then adds a predicted species column to the dataset, and finally exports it as a CSV file. CSV is not a very efficient encoding of data, but it works for a small file like this, and is very easy to handle in plot or D3. In the second example, we'll run a shell script to evoke DuckDB to fetch data from an API and produce a parquet file. The data we're downloading is about fuel stations, and it's coming from an API on the website openei.org. We then pick just the columns we want, select only the fuel stations in California, and finally export the data as an efficient parquet file. This can then be loaded into DuckDB again inside the browser, or directly used with observable plot to create visualizations. How about some simple clustering using the built-in features in R? This data loader reads in the same Penguin's dataset as the Python example earlier, converts it into a data frame, and then runs k-means clustering on it. The result is again exported as a new CSV file to be used on a dashboard or other data app. Our final data loader example is written in Julia, and it shows one of the more unusual data formats, which is text. This little example script fetches a book from Project Gutenberg, parses the text into paragraphs, and then pulls out one particular paragraph. You could obviously build much more on this, like text mining, sentiment analysis, and more. These are just a few examples to show you code in a handful of languages, but data loaders can run code in any language. As I'm making this video, the list of languages that are supported by default includes JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, R, Rust, Go, Java, Julia, PHP, shell scripts, and even binaries. You can add your own to the list or run them through shell scripts. Go ahead and try it yourself in a framework project. It's easy to get started. Whatever process or pipeline you want to use to access, process, or model your data is available and can power fast interactive data apps that don't make your users wait.